And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Train games are a very popular theme, and one of the older train games that's been out for quite a long time is Empire Builder, but in this year it came out with a brand new edition, which is by far the nicest edition. In fact, I have another review that you can check out if you'd like to compare this edition to the older version um, of Empire Builder. But Empire Builder is what we call a crayon rail game in which you will actually draw on the board with crayons to show where your tracks go. And it's a pickup and delivery game where you're picking up goods and delivering them to other spots on the board, trying to make more, the, a certain amount of money before the other players do. Here's the board. It shows you basically North America, the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And you can see different landmarks on the board. The biggest landmarks are going to be major cities. If you notice, there's different um, mileposts here. And you'll be drawing lines from post to post with a crayon on the board. It wipes off later on. And then each, several of these places are cities. For example, here you can see Dallas, which is a smaller city. And Dallas also produces cotton and oil. So you can pick that up at that city. And you can see several cities. Some cities are larger. For example, down here at the bottom, we have Mexico City, Los Angeles over here, uh, Kansas City, Chicago, Atlanta, New York, and, over, and then Seattle up in the top corner. And at the end of the game, you have to have your railroad network connected to six of those large cities. So basically, the entire game is played on this board as players are going to be building networks of track and moving goods from one city to another. The game is an economic game, and it revolves around money, which is here. You can see it's paper money, and I'm not a real big fan of paper money, but you got to live what you get with. Each player starts with a certain amount of money, and they're going to be using that money to build track on the board. Depending on where you build track, depends on how much money you spend. Normally, to build track from one post to another costs a million dollars, but to connect to cities costs more. For example, connecting to this city costs three million dollars. And if you ever go through, if you ever go through the mountains, that will cost you an extra million dollars to show how difficult it is to go through the mountains. And there's different penalties, maybe for crossing rivers and and such. But you have you can only spend up to twenty million dollars per turn, so you can only build a certain amount of track per turn. Then, when you're done building track on your turn, you have a train. Now, this funky-looking piece is what players use for their trains in their color. And your train can move a certain distance each turn, picking up and delivering goods. How far can your train move? Well, it depends on the car that you have in front of you. Everybody starts with this card here. This is your regular train. It has a speed of 9 per turn and can carry two loads of goods. So, for example, here's my train. And I got copper as one of my loads, and my other load that I have is fish. If I have those two loads, I can go drop them off. Later on in the game, you'll have the ability to upgrade your train. You can either upgrade it to a faster train with a speed of 12, or you can upgrade it to the same speed of train, but it has three, or you can carry three loads. And then from either one of those upgrades, you can upgrade to the final combination, which is a speed of 12, and it has a, it can carry three loads. Now all that costs money, so you'll be stuck with your original train for a while, moving that around. Now as we looked at this box here, you can see that there are different goods that are available across the board. And they're color coded to help you find them a little easier. The green are the agricultural uh, resources, the, the black ones are livestock, brown is manufactured goods, and blue is natural resources. And then you got tourists and circuses, which are gray. But players are going to be drawing cards at the beginning of the game. Let's take a little closer look at one of these cards here. Now, this card here says that if you can get coffee to Chicago, you get $35 million. If you get oats to Detroit, you get $12 million. And if you get oil to Boise, you'll get $22 million. Now, you have to decide which one of those you will do. And you'll have a hand of three cards. So you'll have nine different choices that you can possibly deliver. Now you might think, well, obviously the $35 million for Chicago, but when you get a good deal like that one, that's, what's going to happen is coffee is nowhere near Chicago. To go get coffee and deliver to Chicago, you have to put down a lot of track, and you're going to run out of money before you can do that. 
So you're going to probably have to find something easier, like the oats to Detroit, and slowly expand your system until you have it big enough to where you can deliver these bigger orders and get in a lot more money. And if you're really lucky, be able to deliver a couple big orders right on top of each other. Sure, you could put coffee in your train and hope for the Chicago 35 million coffee cart to come up, but that's not guaranteed. You can use other people's track, but you're going to have to pay them money, and it's usually not worth it. Not to mention, every time you deliver one, your card is gone, so you're only going to be able to use, deliver one of those things on that card, and then you'll get a new card. And sometimes you'll get a special event card, like, for example, anybody here who's within five mile posts of the Atlantic isn't able to move, and you're not going to be able to even build in that area. And these are just events that come up during the course of the game. So players are going to be looking at these cards and trying to determine where to go. This is one of the problems with the game. Now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy this game, but it takes a very long time to figure out what you want to do. You are open-ended. You can build track anywhere you want on the board. And because of that, you get three cards, looking at your tracks, looking at where you want to go. You're just going to have a difficult decision on, on what to do. And so people will take a while thinking about their turns. So I found that the game is best with two or three players because of this, as they can much more easily determine where they want to go on the board and look at their cards. Because every time you draw a new card, you're going to have to determine where you're going to go this turn. But still, it's a lot of fun trying to do that and looking at the whole game as, as an economic simulation, where to pick up goods and where to deliver them. There are very complex train games out there. Uh, but this one is not really that complex, although it feels complex. You'll get the cards, you'll look at your cards, and you'll say, oh, where should I go? I don't know where to start building my track. The goal of the game is to connect a certain amount of these major cities and then to gain a certain amount of money. It's a lot more, it's not as fast as you think. And in fact, the game starts out at this slow crawl. You build some track, you get some money. You build some track, you get some money. And finally you start seeing a profit. Finally, you start being able to build a lot of track uh, and really get a lot of money on your turn. And sometimes you run out of money and you just move your train around, eventually drawing cars until you can get some kind of load that you can deliver somewhere. And I enjoy the game, but like I said, it seems like it's best with two or three because with four or five, it really bogs down. Uh, you sit there fiddling your thumbs, waiting for your turn, not sure, you know, you, you might know what you're going to do. When I play with groups of people, I always say, think about what you're going to do when it's not your turn. But the problem is, in the middle of your turn, you can draw a card and you have to think about it before you do anything else on your turn. Still entertaining. This has the nicest components of this system to date. Still not as good as they could be, but at least the rule book and the, the sheets that help you look, figure out where all the cities are, where all the goods are, and moving them back and forth. It's educational to that degree, economic, lots of fun. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.